Okay, so good morning once again, BSRT2 students. How are you? So welcome back to our virtual class. So this is once again RT212, Radiation Production and Characteristics. So this morning, we will be discussing all about the atom. I know you had this when you were in high school. So probably you have an idea about all about the atom. And as you can still remember, the one of the branches of physics is atomic physics. So before that, I want you to have a recap of our previous discussion. So as what you can see in the right side of your monitor, we have just concluded the discussion on the fundamentals of radiation physics, the last meeting, by discussing all about the mechanics. And that we said that mechanics is a branch of physics that deals with the motion of objects. By which we can say we can categorize into two. We have statics if that object is at rest or should be in dynamics if that object is in motion. Dealing with the different types of motion, so we have defined velocity in which we said that this is the change of the distance over time and similarly defined speed by which it is the change of the distance also which is similar to velocity however we said that speed is a scalar quantity whereas velocity is a vector quantity when we say scalar these are quantities with only magnitude but without direction the other way around that is a vector quantity in which there is a magnitude and also there is the direction and also we have defined acceleration in which we said that it is the change of velocity over time or it is how quickly or slowly the velocity is changing. Of course, when we deal with the different or mechanics, so we have to touch the different Newton's laws of motion or the fundamental laws of motion in which there are three laws of motion. First, we have the law of inertia in which it states that a body at rest will remain at rest or a body in motion will continue moving in a straight line unless acted by an external force. And we said that the most commonly used term to refer for the inertia is the mass in which we said that um, uh, the mass of the object, the harder to accelerate. The second one, we have the uh, law of motion uh, force. Okay, so we have a formula, force equals mass times acceleration. And as a unit for force is, of course, Newton. Of course, we have defined or we have identified the third law of motion, which is the law of interaction or the law of action-reaction, in which it states that for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. So we have also similarly defined weight and uh, differentiated from mass, we said that weight is a force on, an, on a body caused by the pull of gravity. And we said that um, the objects that fall to the earth accelerate at a constant uh, acceleration, which has a value of 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay, so weightlessness is experience. Um, if uh, an object is being far away with the center of the gravity, also, we have defined momentum. So, it, we have defined that momentum is the product of mass and velocity. Also, we have defined work. Work is the product of force times distance and it has an SI unit of joules. And we have defined power, in which we said that power is uh, work divided by time. It is expressed in terms of watts. Or in British, this is equivalent to horsepower, wherein one horsepower has a numeric value of 746 watts. And of course, when we talk about uh, mechanics, we have to speak of the energy. And in radiography, we have two important forms of radi uh, energy. We have kinetic energy, in which, in which we said this is the energy in motion, given the formula 1 half m v squared and 
it has an SI unit of joules. We also said that potential energy is the stored energy of position or configuration, which is a formula of mass times acceleration due to gravity times height, and of course, it is expressed in terms of joules. And lastly, we have discussed all about the heat because um, it is one of the important concerns of the equipment maintenance, especially to radiologic technologists. And we said that heat units are also expressed in terms of joules. But, however, the SI unit for heat is in terms of calorie. So this morning, we are to discuss again all about the atom, or this is an introduction to atomic physics. Okay, so before we formally start with our discussion, allow me, or I want you to get a piece of paper, of course, a pencil or a pen, because we will have a short pretest. Anyway, this is just um, yakang yakan yoto kasi madali lang to. This is just to measure how far or what is your um, existing knowledge all about the atom. Okay, so I will give you uh, 10 seconds to answer and um, I will read a question only once and again I will give you 10 seconds to think of your or to, to select the best answer don't you worry again this is easy lang to chicken lang to yakang yakan yoto okay so we have first item so a certain nuclide has 55 protons and 78 neutrons its atomic number would be is it letter a 78 letter b 133 letter c 55 or letter d 23 Okay, so let's proceed to item number two. An element has Z equals 8 and A equals 19. How many electrons does it have? Is it A, let 8, B, 19, C, 27, or letter D, 11? Okay, let's move on. The symbol 130-56 barium and 138-56 barium are examples of letter A, isotopes, letter B, isobars, letter C, isotones, or letter D, isomers. Okay, next. Which of the following set of elements are considered isotones? Letter A, 131-54 xenon and 131-53 iodine. Letter B, 130-53 iodine and 131-53 iodine. Letter C, 131-54 xenon, 132-55 cesium. Letter D, 133-56 barium, 132-57 lanthanum. Okay, next item. These are atoms with different number of protons and neutrons, but the same total number of nucleons. Letter A, isotopes. Letter B, isobars. Letter C, isotones. Letter D, isomers. Okay, next item. These are atoms with same Z but different A. Letter A, isotopes. Letter B, isobars. Letter C, isotones. Letter D, isomers. Okay. 
Okay, next item. The charge of the nucleus of an atom is essentially, is it letter A, negative, letter B, positive, letter C, neutral, letter D, zero? Next, give the number of electrons in 27 aluminum in which Z equals 13. Is it letter A, 12, B, 13, C, 14, D, 27? Next item, 15 oxygen and 17 oxygen are examples of letter A, isotopes, letter B, isotones, letter C, isomers, letter D, isobars. Next item, Referred to as the atomic mass number, except letter A, number of protons and neutrons, letter B, number of neutrons, letter C, nucleons, letter D, the symbol, capital letter A. Next item. Okay, so that ends our pretest. So later, uh, hold your answers first because later we will have the post test, and of course we are we have to give the rationale for each uh, item. Okay, okay, na ba tayo? Okay, so now let's move on to our discussion again. This is all about the atom. Okay, so as radiologic technology students, so have you asked yourself why do we have to study about the atom? Bakit kaya kailangan nating mag-study ng atom? Eh, mag -e x ray naman tayo. Okay, so let allow me to read the introduction. So after studying energy and its interaction with matter, then we will shift attention to the basis of matter itself. So, in a physical analysis, all things can be classified as matter or energy. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. So, it is the material substance of which physical objects are composed. All matter is composed of fundamental building blocks called the atoms. Okay, so I'll keep you hanging with the question. And then... I will bring you to another slide. Hopefully, I can unlock the question that I raised previously. So, the atom, again, is the building block of the radiographer's understanding of the interaction between ionizing radiation and matter. Although tissue has an extremely complex structure, it is made of atoms and combinations of atoms. So by examining the structure of atoms, we learn what happens when the structure is changed. So basically, our entire, can I say entire discussion for this subject, radiation production and characteristics, is or will be rooted from the atom. Okay, so how radiation is produced, of course, we can trace that using the f uh, illustrations of the atom. Because again, the different forms of radiation are created either inside the nucleus of an atom or outside the nucleus of an atom. So basically, we will be discussing all about the atom and of course the interaction or radiation interaction with matter. Either the radiation will interact inside the nucleus of an atom or outside the nucleus of an atom. So again, all of our discussion will um, seemingly be reflected with this topic. Kaya, as I've been saying, 
hopefully, itong mga discussion na ating ginagawa ay hindi nyo makakalimutan all through your uh, entire studentry as radiologic technology student. Okay, so let's have the centuries of the discovery of, of course, the atom. Paano nga ba na-discover ang atom? In our reference, it says that the earliest recorded reference to the investigation of atoms comes from the Greeks several hundred years BC. And it was referred or linked to the work of the Greek philosopher Democritus. Scientists at that time thought that all matter was composed of four substances, the earth, water, air, and fire. If you are fond of watching Incantadia, so meron tayong brilyante ng lupa, brilyante ng tubig, ng hangin, at ng apoy. According to them, all matter could be described as combinations of these four basic essences. So, bawat isang elemento ay mayroong apat na essences, wet, dry, hot, and cold. Okay? Wet is for, basically, this is for water. Dry, this is for earth. Hot, this is for fire. And cold, this is for air. But again, they described um, the basic substances that these are modified by these essences. Wet, dry, hot, and cold. Okay, so the next reference among the centuries of discovery is through the work of an English school teacher who in the person of John Dalton. So according to Dalton, an element was composed of identical atoms that reacted the same way chemically. For example, all oxygen atoms were alike. They looked alike, they constructed alike, and they reacted alike. They were, however, very different from atoms of other elements. The physical combination of one type of an atom with another was visualized as being a hook and eye affair. The size and number of hooks and eyes were different for each element. In other words, each element is uh, um, different from each other. E, um, if you are familiar with the hook and eye girls, I know you are. Tama ba ako? Kasi alam ko meron kayo mga bra, di ba? So may mga hook and eye dyan. Okay? So... After the work of John Dalton, probably 50 years after Dalton's work, here comes Dimitri Mendeleev who developed the first periodic table of element. According to Mendeleev, atoms can be arranged in increasing ato atomic mass number. But sad to say, in these modern times, we are not already using the Dimitri Mendeleev periodic table of elements. Kanino na kaya ang ginagamit na at, ng ating pa, sa panahong ito? Alam nyo ba kung kanino? Okay, that will be your assignment. Okay, so after Dalton's work, here comes J.J. Thompson. So he described the atoms as looking something like a plum pudding in which the plums were represented negative electric charges or the electrons and the pudding was a shapeless mass of uniform positive electrification. So the number of electrons was thought to equal the quantity of positive electrification because this atom was known to be equally neutral. By the way, the plum pudding theory is also commonly termed as the raisin bread theory. If you are familiar with the raisin bread, ito nga may mga pasas. So, the pasas or the raisins are rep or represent the negative electrification. And the bread, the tinapay itself, represent the positive electrification. It's like uh, the plum pudding theory. So the rays or the, 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 the negative electric charges are embedded all throughout 
the positive electrification that was according to J.J. Thompson. And that the discovery of electrons is credited to J.J. Thompson. My, my, my question is, oh, ang dami kong nang ipapa-research sa inyo. Una, kanino yung periodic table? Ngayon, I want you to, um, to go deeper or to, uh, what's this? To, to research who discovered protons and neutrons of an atom. Ano? Okay, so that will be another assignment. So let's proceed. After J.J. Thompson's work, here comes a person who said, Pare, parang mali ata yung pinaggagawa mo. Parang mali yung mga na-discover ko. So, through a series of ingenious, uh, ingenious experiments, Ernest Rutherford in 1911 disproved o oh, nag-disagree siya sa Thompson's model of the atom. Rutherford introduced the nuclear model, which described the atom as containing a small, dense, positively charged center surrounded by a negative cloud of electrons he called the center of the atom as the nucleus. Okay, kasi kay J.J. Thompson, the negative electrification or the negative charges are embedded. Nakapalaman siya or nakaskatter siya doon sa positive electrification. Sabi ni uh, Ernest Rutherford, mali yun pare kasi yung, sen yung center noon is positive electrification. And then, the negative charge particles ay nakapalibot lamang doon sa maliit na sentro kung tawagin ay nucleus. And by the way, Ernest Rutherford is credited to the discovery of the nucleus of an atom. But, but, again, again, hindi siya ang nakadiscover ng protons and neutrons. Siya ang nakadiscover ng nucleus. Pero, sa ibang references, sinasabi na hindi talaga siya ang nakadiscover ng nucleus, kundi ang dalawa niyang studyante na nagngangalang si Geiger at saka si Mars din. Of course, siya yung teacher. So, definitely ipapacheck ng mga students ang work ng or ang, uh, ang kanilang work sa kanilang teacher. And in the end, the credit was given to Ernest Rutherford. Okay. So, here comes another scientist. But, hindi naman ito nagdi-disprove. Bagkos, in 1913, Niels Bohr improved Rutherford's description of the atom. Bohr's model was the miniature solar system in which the electrons revolve around the nucleus in prescribed orbits or energy levels. So, for our purposes, the Bohr atom represents the best way to picture the atom although the details of atomic structure are more accurately described by a newer model called the quantum chromodynamics. Okay, so that ends the centuries of the discovery of atom. So let's give um, a short recap ng mga model na ginamit nila. So based on the Greeks, so there are four substances. Okay, so we have... Uh, earth, air, fire, and water in which each of the f substances were combinations of four basic essences we have cold, wet, dry, and the hot. Following the... By the way, the um, word atom was um, formerly or um, this is based on the Greek word me atomos which means indivisible. So, indivisible or cannot be divided. So, in this discussion, we are going to find out if that definition still applies. If an atom cannot be divided un up to this point in time. Next, of course, is a model from J uh, no, no, John Dalton. This is the hook and eye affair in which he said that um, the number of hooks is equivalent to the number of eyes. Okay, para mas madaling maintindihan, girls, etigam din yung mga bra. May dadi to hook and eye. Ano? So, pag hook and eye, JJ, uh, JJ Thompson, John Dalton. 
Okay, next we have the plum pudding theory. In This is proposed by J.J. Thompson. So, plum pudding or the raisin bread theory in which the negatively charged particles are embedded through the positive electrification. The, uh, the plum rep uh, the, the plum or the raisins represents negative electrification and the pudding or the massless shape of bread represents the positive electrification. Next, here is the nuclear model by Ernest Rutherford in which he said that there is a dense or small dense positively charged center surrounded by a uh, cloud of electrons. So he called the center as the nucleus of the atom. And finally, this is the Bohr atom, which is a miniature solar system in which the nucleus represents as the sun and the electrons that revolve in specified orbits represents the planets. Okay, so that uh, concludes the timeline. So we have again from, from the Greeks, uh, from the Greeks, we have from Dalton. We have from J.J. Thompson, we have from Ernest Rutherford, and we have from Niels Bohr. Okay, let's move on. So our understanding of the atom today is essentially that which Bohr represented a century ago. So as you, what you can see in our illustration, this is derived from the Bohr model. With the development of high energy particle accelerators or atom smashers, the structure of the atomic nucleus is slowly being mapped and identified. So more than 100 subatomic particles have been detected and described by physicists working with particle accelerators. So yung iba yung iba sabi nila tatlo lang yung subatomic particles. Um, hindi ko naman, uh, I won't argue with them kasi totoo naman. But yung sinasabi nilang tatlo, these are the fundamental particles. Take note we have, or there are 100, more than 100 known subatomic particles. Some of which are leptons, muons, gluons, quarks, and antiquarks, and many others. So our import, uh, our discussion here will focus on the fundamental particles or the fundamental subatomic particles. So nuclear structure is now well defined. So we have the nucleons. So nucleons is different from nucleus because when we say nucleons, these are protons and neutrons. These are composed of quarks that are held together by gluons. So, these protons and neutrons, however, are... Uh, okay, okay. So, these quarks and gluons are, however, are of little consequence to radiologic science. So, only three primary constituents of an atom, so the electron, the proton, and the neutron, are considered here. And they are called the fundamental subatomic particles. Okay? So, as you can see in our illustration... So, we have the uh, electron. So, according to Niels Bohr, this represents the planet in our solar system. So, we have the protons and neutrons bound together inside the nucleus. Then, protons and the protons and neutrons are more commonly known as or collectively known as nucleons. Okay. So, let's move on. Okay, so getting to know each other or getting to know these, these subatomic particles, so we will start to discuss about the electrons. Who is an electron or what is an electron? So, electrons are very small particles that carry one unit of negative electric charge. So, again... Negative. Mga nega students dyan are compared to kuan, uh, electrons. Pero in this pandemic, di ba, take note, mas importante maging negative. Negative sa swab test, negative sa rapid test. Kaya mas sometimes maganda din naman maging nega-nega. Ano? Maging bitter-bitter. 
So their mass is 9.21 times 10 raised to the negative 31 kilogram. So they can be pictured as about the nucleus in precisely fixed orbits, just as other planets in our solar systems revolve around the sun. So again, this is derived from... Um, Niels Bohr that electrons are comparable to the planets in our solar systems or system that uh, revolve around the sun. Next, subatomic or fundamental subatomic particle. Okay, oh, hindi pala next. Ito pa pala. Continuation pa pala. Ano ba si sir? Nagdadali. So because an atomic particle is extremely small, its mass is expressed in atomic mass units for our convenience. So one atomic mass unit is equal to one mass of carbon-12 atom. So the electron mass is 0 0.00054 amu. When the precision is not necessary, a system of whole numbers called atomic mass numbers is used. And then the atomic mass number of electron take note is 0. Masa ma sasabdan nato niyan bakit zero it iya atomic mass number. So the nucleus contains particles called nucleons of which there are two particles we have protons and neutrons. Both have nearly 2000 times the mass of an electron. The mass of the proton is 1.673 times 10 raised to the negative 27 kg. And the neutron is slightly heavier at 1.675 times 10 raised to the negative 27 kilogram. The atomic mass number of each one of each is 1. Okay, take note. And the primary difference between a proton and neutron is electric charge. So the proton carries one unit of positive electric charge. And the neutron carries no charge. And it is electrically neutral. Okay, so sa pag uh, being a student daw, mas importante you are a proton, always positive. Pero sa pandemic, hindi pwedeng maging proton ka. Mas maganda sa pandemic na electron ka, always negative. Hindi pwedeng maging neutral ka lang. Kasi balimbing yon di ba? Balitaw. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, take note of their um, masa because when we discuss all about the um, electromagnetic radiation especially when we touch the law of uh, I mean, theory of relativity and the quantum theory so um, kailangan dati ng data all about the mass ng subatomic particles possible electron orbits ito na ba yun? Okay, so possible electron orbits are grouped into different shells. Okay, so the arrangement of these shells help reveal how an atoms react chemically. That is, how it combines with other atoms to form molecules. Because a neutral atom has the same number of electrons in the orbit as protons in the nucleus, the number of protons ultimately determines the chemical behavior of an atom. And the number of protons determines the chemical element. So, take note. Yeah, highlight lang natin ito ha. Um, let me read this again. That uh, because a neutral atom has the same number of electrons in the orbit as protons in the nucleus, the number of protons ultimately determines the chemical behavior of an atom. Take note. And the number of electrons determines the chemical element. And later, we will uh, discuss that the number of protons is also called the atomic number. And take note again that in a neutral atom, again, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. Okay? So, given the problem, we have the atomic number or the number of protons. So, we can say that it has the same number of electrons. Not unless, not unless... Ito yun. Ah, okay. Sige, not unless, hang lang muna. Let's uh, proceed. Electrons can exist only in certain shells. 
which represent different electron binding energies or energy level. Okay, kumbaga, you are on the second year, so iba na dapat yung um, knowledge, ano? Mas, mas kumbaga, mas genius, congenius ka na sa BSRT1, so nag-higher na ang IMO level. Okay, tapos pag third year, mas iba na't IMO level, mas oh, okay, ma labaw ka na ka-genius, pinaka-genius ka na, mas genius ka pa sa pinaka-genius, okay, ganun. Okay, so, consider mo, ano, the Chinese garter, ano, so, ma maluksu ka, kumbaga, ang garter, adi pala sa Iyasiki, maluksu ka na ba, as in, madalagan, tapos maluksu, diri pa daw, ano, masayon pa, tapos, nagtitika taas, mauna ito, madalagan ka na, tapos maluksu, For identification purposes, electron orbital shells are given the codes K, L, M, N, O, P, and Q. Ihapon natin, pera? So, K, L, M, N, O, P, and Q. So, there are only seven shells or seven electron shells. Okay, so to relative binding energies of electrons from the closest to the nucleus to the farthest of the atom. So the closer the electron is to the nucleus, the greater is its binding energy. Kau ba naman, di ba? Kung baga, inisya, inisya, inisya nga atong discussion, nakakabitter danay sa mga kuan, may mga LDR. Ano? Because sabi dito, the closer the electron to the nucleus, the greater is its binding energy. So, if the electron is close to the nucleus, hataas nga yan iti iakuan, mas banded siya, mas makuri siya mabulag. Tama ba yun? So, kumbaga, long distance iti your relationship, mas madali ka mo magbulag? Hmm. Ano, nakita lang nato na KMJS. Nakarelate na kita da yun. So, however, energy level is different. The higher the energy level, of course, may i-maintain na to nga energy para ini nga elektron, di siya basta-basta matanggal sa atom. Ano? Okay. So, The total number of electrons in the orbital shell is exactly equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. Gimbalik lang natin kanina, no? So, if an atom has an extra electron or has had electron removed, it is said to be ionized. An ionized atom is not electrically neutral but carries a charge equal in magnitude to the difference between the number of electrons and protons. Okay, let me give an emphasis to this. So, let me repeat again. If the atom has an extra electron or had uh, an electron removed, it is said to be ionized. So, we have the term ionization. Ano? So, again, technically, pag ionized na an atom, so, diri na siya neutral. Because when we say ionization, this is the removal of an orbital electron from the atom. Removal. So, pwede ito nga na-remove nga electron bumalin sa sayo ka-atom. So, pwede we can say that nag-add kita ng extra electron or has had been removed so it is said to be ionized. So, technically again, the number of protons, so given natin na symbol P na may positive, so this is always equal to electron. Ano? Always good na. However, there are conditions pa lang ha, diri na siya nag-i-equal if that atom is already ionized. Ionized. Ano? Anong susugad nga ionized again? So, this is removal of an electron from the orbit of an atom. So, probably, ito nga na-remove, pwede magbalin liwat sa another atom. So, which means, kung ma-remove an atom, ay, an atom, an electron sa atom, of course, mas damo ang protons. So, that atom will become a positive ion. 
And, ito siya, gintatawag nato na an, ayon. Halimbawa, nakakita ka mong symbol, aluminum. So, nakabutang dida plus. Tapos, let's say, 13 nan iya symbol. So, yaon siya, 13 nga protons. Pero, kay positive naman siya, so, peraan aton electrons. Mas damo or mas dito eh, sa protons. Diba, sabi natin, mas damo dapat ang protons kasi positive siya. So, therefore, an aton protons is 13. So, an aton electron is only 12. Bakit? Kasi kulang tayo ng isa. Positive siya eh. Okay? Halimbawa naman, let's say, carbon-carbon kasi tak pinakamadali ma-memorize. So, um, there is an addition of electron to a certain atom. So, magiging negative ion na siya. Ano? So, negative ion, tawag to naton, cut ion. Cut ion ha, derication. Ano yun? Calculator, casio. C-A-T-I-O-N. Halimbawa, as I've said, carbon, kaya mo takon madali ma-memorize. Nakakita ka mo nga may symbol nga negative, didi sa baw, -baw. So, we can say, ini, na at, ini nga atom, yun siya, 6 protons, pero mas damuan iya, electron. Mas damuhin usa. So, 7 an iya electron. Again, that only happens if that atom is ionized. If not, it will be always equal it era protons and electrons. Pag waray ka mo nakita nga mga symbol na pareha sini nga positive or pareha sa di nga negative, so meaning neutral ito nga atom. And that we can say na no, diri pa siya ionized. So equal pa it protons and electrons. Nakuha? Okay, very good. Okay, nakuha ito? Okay, so again, if you have questions, don't hesitate. So, turuhong ko lang atong mga paagi that you can uh, ask me questions. Una, of course, through the UEP e-learning portal or through your Moodle, pwede ka mag-comment nga da. Or, through our group chat, Facebook Messenger, pwede ka magpakiana, pwede lot ako magpakiana. Or, pwede liwat through this YouTube video, pwede ka mag-comment nga da. Or, para mga asynchronous through municipality link, pwede niyo ako i-text through my um, mobile number, of course. Okay, let's move on without any further ado. Okay, so physicists call the shell number N as the principal quantum numbers. So, every electron in every atom can be precisely identified by four quantum numbers, the most important of which is the principal quantum number. Okay, so the three quantum numbers and nabibilin nga tulo, another assignment na liwat niyo. Pero diri niya karag sigun nga assignment nga ipapasa niyo ako either hard copy or electronic copy. Karag sigun ko hini, basahon niyo. This is for further information gihapon para mas makabuli gayo. Maklaro, okay? So, i-mention ko nala an other, tool, uh, other three quantum numbers. So, we have azimuthal, we have the spin and the magnetic quantum numbers. So, I, hel I hold you responsible to read these um, concepts. Ano? So, what we, ha what we have here is, of course, the principal quantum numbers. Okay. Again, we have the principal quantum number. Nano ini siya? So, balikon taha, we have seven shells. We have K, L, M, N, O, P, Kutubla, Q. Waray na magsusubara, waray na R. Okay. So, bakit kaya na may mga la Bakit mao itong letters? If you tend to ask me that question, actually, I do not know the reason. Bakit nag-start ng letter K, L, M, N, O, P? Waray mag-start as A, B, C, D. Okay, sige. Let's move on. No. So, tigam niha, una, the first shell is K, so nod L, M, N, O, P, N, that's letter Q. So, ini, nga akong discussion again, this is only on the principal quantum number. We have four 
quantum numbers. So again, I hold you responsible to read the, those concepts. Okay, so the maximum number of electrons that exist in each shell increases with the distance from the shell from the nucleus. So, unang uh, shell is, ang pinakaharani is K. So, after sa K is L, after M, and pinakalast is the Q. So, sabi dito, the maximum number of electrons that can exist in each shell increases with the distance of the shell from the nucleus. These numbers need not to be memorized because the electron limit per shell can be calculated from the following expression, 2n squared. So this is based on the Pauli's exclusion theory. Ganito yon. Okay. So, yeah, meron ditong n, ano, n. So, n represents kung ikapera siya ka nga shell. So, we have designated already k is the, k shell is the first or the number one shell. L is the second, number two. Okay, so, M, N, okay. So, let's take for example, applying this 2N squared. So, we are going to find the number of electrons, let's say, for example, in the K shell. K shell, okay. So, K is the first electron shell. So, bubutangan natin, we have to replace this N as 1. Okay, 2, 1, okay, raised to 2. So, mag do we need to use calculator? Wag na lang, ano? Wag na lang. So, 1 times 1, may masugat na liwat nga 2. Okay, so 1 times 1 is 1. So, 2 times 1 is 2. So, therefore, in k shell, there are 2 electrons lamang. Di na pwedeng magsubra. Okay, nakuha. So, if we are going to find for the L shell, okay, replace na ito. Ganun, ganun. Ano? Okay, sige daw. Sige daw, let us try this problem. How many electrons in the M shell? Madali la, no? Madali la. So, given, ikaperad to, we have K, L, L, and M. So, ikaperahi M, katulo, ka shell. So, 2, um, di ba, N squared? So, 2, replace mo an N by 3, okay? So, 3 times 3 is equivalent to 9. So, therefore, Therefore, 2 times 9 is 18 electrons. Tama ba? Let us see. Kung tama na aton answer. Okay, very good. Ang galing talaga ng mga estudyante ko. Palakpakan. So, we have 18 electrons. So, kung magsugad ako, compute mo ang number of electrons sa kuan. Let's say, sa letter O. Can you do that? Can you do that? Of course. Kaya na ito niyo. So, designated again. So, inihiya again. This is the principal quantum number. So, we are using the Pauli's exclusion theory. Ha? Okay? So, sige, pwede na ito ni Yuko Haon ang mga number of electrons per shell. Okay? So, again, I hold you responsible for that. Sige, let's proceed. So, are you still good? Okay. Sige, galaw-galaw. So, the number of electrons in the outermost shell is equal to its group in the periodic table. So, it determines the valence of electron. By the way, the um, electron in the outermost shell of an atom is called a valence electron. Mayawat na, labangin ako mag-chapter test after this discussion. May ga-answer na ka mo, ano? Sige. So, again, um, the number of electrons in the outermost shell is equal to its group in the periodic table. So, ang mga vertical, 
So, ang mga, pa, kung mga imod ni periodic table, ang mga pa vertical arrangement, so, these are called um, group. Ang mga pa horizontal, tawag ita era, period. So, the number of electrons daw in the outermost shell is equal to its group. Group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4. Okay, so it determines the valence of an electron. And the number of outermost shell electron is equal to its period in the periodic table. So remember, remember, remember that no outer shell electron can contain more than 8 electrons. Ha? Huh? So, kutubla walok because we have uh, only 8 groups. So again, this is based on the principal quantum number class. Do not be confused kasi we have four quantum numbers. Okay, so no outer shell can contain more than eight electrons. Pag halimbawa, and since mas well, mapakean na ka, sir, kay ba man ang kuan, and di ba may dakita 2n squared. So what if nagkuan siya dito, nag, nag 9 an electron or um, oo. So, what will you do? Of course, mahimu kitahin another shell. Nakuha. So, if halimbawa sa outer shell electron, nag 9 electron na siya, so we have to create another shell. Sige nga, let's have this exercise. So, locate the group and period of potassium. So, it has 19 electrons. So, breaking down the number of electrons, we can say that automatic sa K, yaon siya dito, 2 electrons. Pero paan sobra? So, we are going to find for 17 more electrons. Ano? Para mag makuha natin ang 19. Okay. So, nano pa? Sa L. Pero adot pwede maka-occupy sa L. So, applying the 2N squared. So, 2... So, second siya, 2 times 2 is, so, 2 times 2 is, okay, so, 4, 2, 2 times 4, so, may 8 electrons sa L shell. So, 2 plus 8, so, we already have 10 electrons, pero ito ang makaka-occupy sa M, sabi natin kanina, 18, di ba? So, pwede ba natin ibutang nalatanan nga 9 na electron sa third, L, uh, sa third shell? Diri pwede kasi maximum lang natin 8. So, therefore, gagawa tayo ng another shell, N. That is 1. Okay, nakuha. So, balikan ta ha. The number of outermost electron is equal to its group. And the number of shells is equal to its period. So, we have how many shells na? K, L, M, N. So, 4. Ano? And shells. 4 shells. Tapos, 1 outer shell electron. So, ma we can say that nandun siya sa group 1 and period 4. Tama ba? Did you get the same answer? Nakukuha ba ako? Sige nga, let's, uh, let's see kung tama na aton answer. Sige nga, let us check. Actually, ginkul ba ako? Kay bangin mali tak answer. Sige, okay. So, let's find the group. Pero ito na so good. Group, group 1 tapos period 4. Yan, yeah, ano ba? Okay, group 1 and period 4. So, let us double check using our periodic table of elements. So, potassium is here. It's here. Sige nga, group 1. Okay, correct. Period 1, 2, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so yay! Hi, correct kita class. Correct ka mo, I mean. Ang galing-galing talaga ng mga BSRT2 students. Palakpakan para sa mga BSRT2 students. So, in other words, this um, ano to, uh, police exclusion theory is only applicable for groups 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8.
palik kita, nagdadali man ini siya. It's only applicable to these groups. It iba. So, magamit na kita hin, iba nga quantum numbers. Nakuha. So, again, that is your assignment. Okay, sige, let's move on. Okay. So, the strength of attachment of an electron to the nucleus is called the electron binding energy designated by capital letter B subscript B. So, the closer the, an electron is to the nucleus, the more tightly it is bound. K-shell electrons have higher binding energies than L-shell electrons and so forth. Okay, so, again, the closer the electron, parang kamulang, if you are together with your boyfriend or girlfriend, sana all. So, the more na, na, na di develop ka mo tagsa-tagsa. However, kung harayo ka mo, hayo ka lugaringon, so may da ka mo ginihimo. The higher is its ano, energy level. So, ganun pala at atom. No? May da energy nga gin maintain kung close and kung far siya. Sana all. Okay. So, often an element is indicated by an alphabetic abbreviation. Such abbreviations are called chemical symbols. Kita nyo naman. So, H for hydrogen, HE for helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Okay, so, whatever. Actually, uh, plug ko lang, when I took the board exam, the only thing that uh, was in my table... Well, table talaga. And my study table is the periodic table of elements. Mga ito na akong ginkukuan, giniinam puon. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, yun. Magmaram kung para na ito. Ano? But, mababaroan ito ni Yodin ni Hatton discussion. Why do we have to be familiarized with these elements? Ha, sabi natin, pan high school na dapat yan. Okay, so the chemical properties of an element are determined by the number and arrangement of electrons. So, sabi natin kanina, the chemical properties, okay, so, it is attributable to the number of protons. And the number of protons is called the atomic number represented by capital letter Z. Okay, sige, let me have an emphasis on this again. Okay, let's say you have element X. And you have this number here in your left subscript. So that is now your atomic number or the number of protons in an element. Sige nga, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom is called the atomic mass number and is symbolized by capital letter A. Andito na pala. Oh. So, X, this is a representation of your element. Z, as your atomic number. And A is the atomic mass number. So, take note that Z is the number of protons and A is the number of protons plus neutrons. So, we have example here. We have the element helium. Okay, it's the second element. So, this, it, it has two protons and it has two neutrons. So, the atomic mass number is four. Okay? Okay, sige. Let's move on. So, now let's come to the different um, configurations or the nomenclatures of the atom. So, kukuhaunin natin ito nga mga A, Z. Kukuhaunin natin based sini nga A, Z, nga in X. Okay? So, tigam ni ha. Uh, A is the atomic mass number. So, this is the number of protons and neutrons. Z is the atomic number. So, let me have an emphasis again on this. So, in a given atom, kung may number na siya dida, so, automatic, that is the number of protons, ano? So, technically, this, that is, para makita na kita din nga symbol, meaning, there is ion. So, the number of electrons is already equivalent to 2. So, to find for the number of neutrons, 
Hindi natin may hindi natin makukuha dayo na no. Dire man natin masasabtan dayo ng neutrons. So to find for the number of neutrons that should be n neutron is a atomic mass number minus the z or the atomic number. Again ha. Again, the number of neutrons is equivalent to atomic mass number minus the na, the atomic number. So for this problem para hin problem para hindi nga element so we have two protons so we have the atomic mass number is 4 so therefore 4 minus 2 is of course we can say yaon siya 2 neutrons nakuha okay sige diretso kita para so kung masabdan mo na ini nga number of or atomic mass number atomic number so we can now have the different configurations of uh, atoms sige we have four nomenclatures actually we have isotopes isobars isotones and isomers sige okay so first we have isotopes isotopes have the same atomic number but different atomic mass numbers. So, isotopes of a given element contain the same number of protons but varying number of neutrons. In other words, isoto uh, no, no, isotopes, isotopes tayo. Isotopes, again, it has, or atoms that have same atomic number but different atomic mass number. So, these are atoms with same Z, diba? But, different A. Same atomic number. So, same ang atomic number, but different an atomic mass number. Same yung A. I know, same yung Z, but different yung A. And para mas madali ni mo masabtan, tigam nila si letter P. P meaning proton. Di ba makakita natin si proton didi sa subscript? So tanan nga element, pag makita mo sa problem, parehas ang number sa subscript. So these are isotopes. So for this example, oxygen 15 and oxygen 17, actually, pag makita mo, parehas it era element. So, we can say parehas it era atomic number. So, we this is an example of isotopes. Okay? Okay, very good. So, now, let's move on to the next nomenclature. We have isobars. Take note kanina, we have a short, uh, uh, para mas madali, ano, nagamit yung mnemonic, so letter P. This is for the proton. So, sa isobars naman, gamit ka mong letter A. Hi na to A. Diba si A? Nakadto siya sa... This is A, Z, tapos X. So, remember mo A. A. So, these are atoms, in other words, with same atomic mass number but different atomic numbers. So, therefore, these are atoms with same A, but different Z. So, isobars are atoms, tigam ni pa, nga, at protons plus neutrons are called nucleons. So, these are atoms that have different number of protons and neutrons, but the same total number of nucleons. So, in this example, kita mo parihas an era atomic mass number parihas an era A so therefore we can say that these elements are examples of isobars okay very good class now let's proceed to the next nomenclature which is isotones these are atoms that have uh, same number of neutrons but different number of protons are called isotones. 
So isotones are atoms with different atomic numbers and different atomic mass numbers but constant value for quantity A minus the Z. Di ba ini nga formula? Para di ini, ini para mahanap naton a number of neutrons. Tama ba ako? Na, na remember pa ba niyo kanina? So di ba mao ito naton formula para mahanap si neutrons. So, isotones are atoms with the same total number of neutrons in the nucleus. Kung kanina sa isotopes, ginggamit mo sa letter P, sa isobars, ginggamit mo sa letter A, so dito, tigam ni mo si letter N, isotones. Meaning, these are atoms with the same number of neutrons. Sige nga, for this example, 15, atomic mass number is 15, Atomic number is 8 and the element is oxygen. The other element has an atomic mass number of 14 and the atomic number is 7 and the element is nitrogen. Sige, 15 minus 8, so that will give you 7. Tama ba? 14 minus 7, that will give you 7. So both elements have... Ano, number, the number of neutrons for these elements are 7. So, therefore, these are examples of isotones. The next nomenclature, di siya masyado makuri. So, these are atoms that have the same number or same atomic number, same atomic mass number. So, in fact, isomers are identical atoms except that they exist at different energy states because of differences in nucleon arrangement. So we have a prime example here. Actually, this is um, a radioisotope that is used in nuclear medicine. So we have technetium 99m. So the subscript, uh, superscript m represents isomerism. Actually, damotera we have uh, technetium 99m per technetate, technetium 99m HDP. Dependent kung gamitan ni mo. Technetium 99m ganon. So, damo-damo ang klasihin, technetium 99. So, these are typical examples of isomers. Para mas maliwanagan, we have this table. So, for isotope, okay, so atomic number, same. Atomic mass number, different. Neutron number, different. For isobar, di ba si isotope, gamit mo P, ano, atomic number, proton. Isobar, Gamit mo si letter A, atomic mass number and 2. So, same. Different, different, and era. Atomic number and neutron number. And for isotone, gamit mo si letter N. That is to designate the number of neutron. So, for isotone, different and atomic number. Different and atomic mass number, but same and era neutron number. Si isomer naman, same and atomic number. Same and atomic mass number. And same and neutron number. Hain siya nagdi-differ? Of course, sa arrangement it iya nucleons. Okay. Sige. Now let's come to our. Oi, nadi na niyo pa borito. Sige nga let. Na ada pa ba niyo papel kanina? Aniyo gin answeran kanina? Sige. Sige. Let's answer kung tama an iyo. Kung damo pa tiyo stack knowledge. About the atom. Sige, let's answer number one. A certain nuclide has 55 protons and 78 neutrons. Its atomic number would be. So, what is your answer? So, the answer is 55. So, take note again of the atomic nomenclature A Z X. So, the number of protons is equal to its atomic number. So, for this item, we have 55 protons. So, therefore, our answer is 55. Okay, next. An element has Z equals 8 and A is equal to 19. How many electrons does it have? So, again, in a typical or in a neutral atom, so the number of protons... Or number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So we said that Z is the number of protons. So therefore, there are also eight electrons. So our answer is letter A. Okay. Next, 
The symbols 130-56 barium and 138-56 barium are examples of. So this question, of course, kita mo, we, they have the same atomic number. They have the same P. Or they have the same Z. Ano? So, P isotopes. So, our answer is, of course, letter A. So, these uh, elements are examples of isotopes. Next. Which of the following set of elements are considered isotones? So, we have to subtract. Ano? To find for the number of neutrons, that will be A minus the Z. Sige. For letter A, kita nyo, letter A, for pa, parehas an era atomic mass number 131. So, ini siya, this is isobars. Or these are isobars. Sa letter B naman, kita niyo, parehas an era atomic number 53. So, letter B is an example of isotopes. Or isotope, di ba? Di siya pwede. Letter C. How about letter C? So, 131 minus, okay, sige, sige, let's, let's um, subtract para mas madali kasi, ah, ma, ma, ito ang formula, diba? So, 131 minus uh, 54, so that will give you, pera, so 77. 77, 7, okay. So, 132 minus 55 equals 77. So, therefore, our answer is letter C. Sige nga, itry mo't letter D. 133 minus 56, so that will give you 77. 132 minus 57, that, oh, 132 minus 57, So, that will give you 75. So, ambot kung nano ito na atom. So, our answer for this item is letter C. Next. These are atoms with different number of protons and neutrons but the same, same total number of nucleons. So, remember, nucleons, these are uh, collection or protons plus neutrons. Or this is, di ba, atomic mass number or letter A. Ano at ito nomenclature nga may letter A? Tigam ni isobar. So, our answer is isobar. Next. These are atoms with same Z but different A. Nanad to? So, Z, atomic number or the number of protons. Protons. So, isotopes. Okay, so our answer is letter A. The charge of the nucleus of an atom is essentially, so, under sa nucleus, or, or nandoon sa nucleus, nandoon si protons plus si um, protons plus neutrons. Of course, mangingibabaw si positive. Ano? Positive. So, our answer is positive. So, okay, there is negative, there is neutral, there is what zero. The the nucleus of an atom, according to Ernest Rutherford, is a small, dense, positively charged center. Okay, next item. Give the number of electrons in this element. Twenty seven. So Z is thirteen. Tapos element is aluminum. So we said that the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So we have 13 protons. Wara man siya symbol di da nga positive or negative. Ano? Wara. So meaning neutral yung atom. So therefore, the number of protons is 13. So the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So therefore, our answer is letter B. So oxygen... 15 and oxygen 17. So, therefore, magparasa rin ang element. Paras ito era atomic number. Ano? So, same atomic number, same P, of course, that is isotopes. Letter A. 
So, these are referred to as atomic mass number except. Okay? So, pwede ba maging protons and neutrons? Yes, pwede. Ano? Pwede ba maging number of neutrons? No? Kasi, di ba? Ano siya? Isotones. Or, ano no? What I mean, kasi, di ba? A, Z, X. So, atomic mass number. Number of protons and neutrons. Dapat. Protons and neutrons. Dire lang kay number of neutrons. Nucleons? Yes, because we said nucleons. This is the number of protons and neutrons. Or the collection of protons and neutrons. Symbol, capital letter A. Of course, adi na nga ni, oh, A. So, our answer is letter B. Except kasi except. So, our answer is letter B. Okay, so that ends our discussion for today. Medyo laba-laba, no? So, these are my references. So, if you have time, please scan your notes, scan your books. And next week, we will discuss all about the fundamental forces of nature. This is in continuation of the discussion of the atoms. And I hope you got something from today's lecture. So, if you have questions again, do, do not hesitate. So, that ends our discussion. Once again, good morning and thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye!